So, uh, in the previous class, we were discussing about the venture capital funds and how they are uh, contributing into the business uh, in Indian financial sector and as well as the uh, in the other economies. And another type of organization which also contributes almost in every economy in the financial system or financial uh, market that is basically your merchant banks. You might have heard about this word again and again because uh, those uh, this organization is uh, very much uh, mandatory whenever we also participate in the equity market and as well as also they are very much uh, uh, important in terms of uh, the financing activities or investment activities in the financial sector as a whole. So, uh, here if you see that uh, merchant banking, this merchant banking concept is not new, uh, it was uh, there in the 17th, 18th century in the Europe. Uh, but in India relatively this concept is uh, not very old, but although it is relatively old now because it, it, it was just started in 1967 through this Greenland's, ba uh, uh, Greenland's bank uh, in 1967. And SBI basically floated its merchant banking division in 1972. The Greenland ba Les Bank, which was uh, started this merchant banking operation in India, after that it has certain kind of implications and it was realized that this particular services is very much required for the financial sector. So, keeping that thing in the mind, SBI State Bank of India has floated this merchant banking division in 1972. Uh, why basically it is required? Because uh, uh, the business or the financing activities or the investment activities in the market has been diverse and the requirement or the services required are totally different whatever way the business was running maybe 100 years back or 50 years back. So, keeping those things into the mind the merchant banking as a service came into the existence in almost all the financial system across the globe. So, India is also following the same pattern and where the merchant banking has a significant role. So, what exactly the merchant banks are, what do they do? If you see there are various definitions. So, if you see the merchant banks is basically an organization which provides the underwriting services or which act as the underwriter, they act as the advisor in terms of the risk management services, in terms of mergers and acquisitions, any other commercial ventures, pricing of the equity, so all kind of consulting services. So, all kind of services always we get from the merchant bankers. Merchant bankers in the real terms is nothing but the investment bankers. So, uh, any kind of services what we get it from the merchant bankers, there are in terms of the of financing in terms of the investment services, in terms of the risk management services, in terms of the valuation services and as well as in terms of the underwriting, underwriting services. So, all kind of services we always get from the merchant bankers. So, that is why merchant banking or merchant banker has their unique positions in the financial system and uh, that is why always we can call them as a consultant, they can they can be called as advisor, they can be called as the risk manager, they can be called as uh, uh, we can say that uh, underwriters etcetera etcetera. So, any definition if you look at every definition comprises all these aspects whenever we discuss about the merchant banking. So, now the question here is that if this is the way the merchant bank works then what kind of services they offer? Already I told you the merchant bankers provide services in terms of the project counseling, in terms of the management of debt and equity offerings, in terms of the equity issue management. They can also provide services in terms of consulting or the advisory services. They provide services in terms of underwriting they provide services in terms of the portfolio management process, they also provide services in terms of restructuring strategies, they, they also provide services in terms of valuation, mergers, acquisition, joint ventures etcetera etcetera and as well as 
if anybody wants to offshore financing, they want to raise the capital from, from abroad, in that particular context also the merchant banks basically provide this assistance to provide the services. So, the importance of merchant bank, the importance of merchant banking is quite significant in any financial systems across the globe. So, one by one let us see what kind of things they do. First of all, the merchant bankers perform functions as a promotional activities. How they help in the promotional activities? Because merchant bankers helps the entrepreneur in con, uh, conceiving the idea, identification of projects, preparing the feasibility of the projects, even the help in obtaining the government approvals, incentives, etcetera, all kind of reports, whatever way the projects should be money should be invested, in which projects should be invested, in whatever way the projects should be carried out, all kind of activities, promotional activities they always uh, carry out with this uh, company, whenever a company needs them or company basically tries to take the help from the merchant bankers. Issue management, issue management in the sense, the management of issues refer to effective marketing of the corporate securities. For example, somebody whenever you go for IPOs, how the pricing of IPO is done, how the price of the corporate bonds will be done how it will go to the public, how will public will know about and what kind of marketing or what kind of uh, uh, steps should be followed or should be taken for the public will be interested for this kind of investment in IPOs or the uh, bonds which are issued by the company. So, for every cases the merchant bank basically acts as an intermediary. And what is the main job? The main job is to transfer the capital from those who own it and to those who need it. They help in that process, they cannot transfer it, but they help in that process that how particular equity can be issued to the public, how the money can be raised from the public, or either it is through the equity issuance or the debt issuance and whatever it may be. So, they always help in the uh, issue management process in terms of all type of financial capitals which are available in the system. That is basically one thing they provide. Then the next uh, is basically what? They provide many services. What is the next service? They also act as this credit syndication. What do you mean by the credit syndication? Credit syndication basically refers to obtaining of the loans from single development financial institutions or a syndicate or a consortium. Merchant banks basically help the corporate clients to raise the syndicated loans from the commercial banks. Because of their reputation, because of their guarantee, because of their uh, uh, kind of uh, market sature, they help always the companies to get the loan or get the kind of debt or the, uh, from the different kind of financial institutions including banks. They do the project counseling all kind of preparation of the project reports, deciding the financing pattern, appraising the project related technical, commercial and financial viability, uh, all kinds of services basically they help to the company whenever the company needs. They also provide the service in terms of the acceptance, credit and credit and bill discounting. What are those activities? The activities basically relates to the acceptance and discounting of bills of exchange. Besides the advancement of the loans to business concerns on strength of such instruments. The information, collect the information in terms of the credit. They also help in the rating process. Whatever way the business should perform, what are the things should be strengthened, by that the rating of the companies can grow. In that way also they provide the services and they provide certain kind of advisory services to the companies. Then we have a uh, major advantage or major service they provide, the major function of the merchant bankers are the portfolio management. The merchant bankers 
basically help the investor in matters pertaining to investment decisions in the taxation uh, and also in terms of buying and selling of the securities which are the securities or which are the stocks which are the bond which are the derivatives instruments should be bought which are the things should be sold which are thing, which are the uh, instruments should be hold on so all kinds of services in terms of the portfolio management they always get it from the merchant banker the investments basically what is the ensure the investments should be done in such a way that they can maximize their return with a given amount of risk or they can maximize the return with a given amount of risk or they can minimize the return they can minimize the risk with a given amount of the return so either they can maximize the return with a given amount of the risk or they can minimize the risk with a given amount of the return either of these two ways basically the portfolio management process goes on and in this process merchant bankers play a very significant role so that is basically one thing they provide that's why the portfolio management is quite important then we have the working capital finance already we know what is working capital finance which required for the short term requirements which fulfill the short term requirements so here what do the merchant bankers do the merchant bankers provide certain services as a part of working capital finance what they do first of all they assess how much working capital the company needs over a period of time assessment of working capital preparing the application for the sanction of appropriate credit facilities for the company who makes the working capital financing it is the commercial banks and they provide all kind of assistant in terms of negotiation with the commercial bank that how the commercial banks will be ready to provide that working capital requirements to the companies advising on issue of debenture for augmenting the long term requirement of working capital debentures are basically the corporate bonds which are long term so how the debentures can be issued which can be a addition to the working capital financing as a financial capital long term financial capital in that process also the uh, merchant bankers help them to get that one or to raise the money from the public so this is the way they basically contribute uh, in terms of the uh, working capital financing for the company this is the uh, major service what they provide in the practical sense that is your mergers and acquisitions this is a specialized service they provide who basically arrange for negotiating the acquisitions and mergers by offering the export valuation regarding the quantum and nature of the considerations which includes many things one is undertaking management audits to identify the areas of strength and weakness in order to help or formulate the guidelines for the future growth conducting the different studies on a global basis to locate the overseas opportunities where the joint ventures mergers collaborations all these things can be carried out with that particular company if there is any issue arises in terms of the conflict between managers and shareholders then they always help the managers for the approval from the shareholders or depositors or creditors or government or any authorities if at all it is required because whenever the company is acquired by another company or any company is acquiring another company all the stakeholders consent consent always taken so convincing or approval from the stakeholder is a very big issue whenever we uh, think about the mergers and acquisitions so all this process basically taken is taken care of by the these are the different stakeholders shareholders depositors creditors government authorities all are basically the stakeholders of the company so whenever any merger or acquisition takes place all the approval from the every stakeholders is, are required so those for getting those kind of approvals the merchant banks or merchant bankers play a very significant role identify the organizations with matching character which particular organizations will be acquired what is the growth potential and how whether it is profitable for the company or not how much money should be paid what is the valuation 
So, all kind of thing basically uh, always done by the merchant bankers, all these services basically are provided by the merchant bankers. How the capitals will be restructured after the acquisitions that also that kind of services the merchant bankers provide, uh, then they also advise in terms of the legal compliances. Because any acquisition and all these things, if it is a cross border acquisition, then the their legal aspect and uh, countries uh, home countries legal aspect, all these things will be considered and all these considerations are taken care by the merchant bankers which are operating uh, on behalf of the companies for this acquisition process. So, these are the different services which basically merchant banker provide in terms of the mergers and acquisitions. Then let us see that what are the other things uh, this merchant bankers uh, do. They also provide leasing and financing facilities. Some of them maintain the venture capital funds to assist the entrepreneurs also because they are highly diversified and they also uh, help the companies in raising finance by way of the public deposits. They also provide services in terms of distributing the dividends or the interest for the debentures because anybody has invested in the corporate bonds the interest should be paid periodically. So, for the payment of the interest for the distribution of the dividends. So, all kind of services basically they are ready to provide uh, which comes under the servicing the issues. So, they are uh, they also help in the tax matters recruitment of the executives uh, and cost management of the audit uh, all kind of services if you find they work as the consultant or the advisor to the company and provide all kind of uh, services in terms of risk management, in terms of investment, in terms of uh, legal issues, in terms of merger acquisition issues etcetera etcetera. So, these are the if you if you observe overall the merchant bankers are really contributing significantly for the development of the business of that corporations. Whenever you talk about the different activities or different kind of business related activities what these companies always face either in terms of reporting uh, writing the project or finding the growth potential or the projects where enough growth potential is available or in terms of the mergers acquisitions whatever it may be all kinds of services always we receive from the merchant bank. So, that is why merchant banking services is quite important or the role of merchant bankers are quite important for the development of the financial system as a whole. There are some uh, SEBI guidelines with respect to the merchant banking in India. So, if you see the guidelines uh, what the SEBI said, there will be one equity merchant banker which will be existing, multiple merchant bankers will not be there, multiple categories of merchant bankers may, will, may be have a list in the future. The merchant banker is allowed to perform the underwriting activity, already we know that it, we are talking about India. For performing portfolio manager, the merchant banker has to seek the separate registration from SEBI. If they, are, they want to work as a portfolio manager for the company, then the separate approval from the SEBI is required. The merchant banker cannot undertake the function of a non-banking financial company such as accepting the deposits, financing others business etcetera, they cannot do that. The merchant banker has to confine themselves or himself only to capital market activities, either it is the long term bond market or equity market or they should not go for to another market which is related to real sector and other things. SEBI basically gives the authorization for a merchant banker to operate for 3 years only and without SEBI's authorization merchant bankers cannot operate in India, after 3 years again they have to renew it. And the minimum net worth of merchant bankers should be 1 crore rupees. Merchant banker has to pay the authorization fee, annual fee and renewal fee regularly. All issues of shares must be managed by one authorized merchant banker, it should be the lead manager of the company, multiple merchant bankers should not be there. The responsibility of the lead manager will be clearly indicated by the SEBI. The lead managers 
are responsible for allotment of the securities, refunds, etc. The merchant bankers has to submit the SEBI all returns and send the reports regarding the issue of the shares whenever the company is going for IPO and other things. A code of conduct for merchant bankers always given by SEBI which has to be followed regularly by them. Any violation of the of the code of conduct uh, will lead to the re uh, revocation of the authorization by the SEBI for the operation of that merchant bank in India. So, these are the sum of the guidelines. There are many guidelines what the SEBI has given for operation of the merchant bank. Some of the summary view about the guidelines for the operation of or the uh, business of merchant banking in the Indian capital market. So, if you see the different categories of the merchant bankers which are existing, we can categorize them into four on the basis of the different services what they provide. If they are category 1 merchant banker, they provide services in terms of issue management, advisory services, consulting services, they can work as a portfolio manager, they can work as an underwriter, etcetera, etcetera. But if you go for the category 2, category 2, what basically we have seen? They can work as an advisor, they can work as consultant, they can work as a co-manager, they can work as an underwriter, they can portfolio manager, but issue management they cannot do. Category 3, they can work as advisor, consultant, underwriter, but the issue management operations they cannot do. And finally, the category 4, they can only play the advisory role or the consulting role and the other roles basically they cannot play. So, on the basis of the services what they provide or types of services what they provide, the, mer the, the merchant bankers uh, have been categorized into four categories in India. So, what is that, uh, what are the other differences in terms of the four categories if you see? So, on the basis of uh, they are categorized on the basis of their capital adequacy norms in terms of its net worth. Category 1, minimum net worth should be 5 crore. Category 2, the minimum net worth should be 50 lakhs. Category 3, the minimum net worth should be 20 lakhs. But whenever they are in the last category, only the advisory services or the consulting services, no net worth is required. Uh, basically, in terms of net worth, if they do not have or they have the financial expertise to provide this kind of services, they can do. It is not mandatory. So, in this context, in terms of their capital adequacy, and the net worth, the categories are defined and on that basis, their services are also defined. That is what basically the categorization of the merchant bankers in Indian context. Then uh, if you see already we, we have uh, said that this merchant bankers play a very significant role in the issue management like your issuance of equity into the market from the market and uh, pricing of the initial public offerings. So, because of that the company has to make a prospectus, the prospectus should contain all kind of information about the company and through that they have to create a demand about that particular product in the market and there is a process what we call it the book building process that we will explain or we will discuss more on the equity market part. But here I just wanted to give you some idea that whenever the prospectus is prepared the merchant banker on behalf of the company basically prepared that prospectus and there basically all kinds of details the, uh, the merchant bankers would have certain obligations, they have certain kind of uh, duties what they have to do whenever they prepared this prospectus before this issuance and whenever the particular company goes to public or uh, generate the money from the public or uh, generate the equity from the public. First of all, they have to make the prospectus what kind of instrument it is, what kind of the price band they have to be reported, they have to appoint the underwriters, either they themselves work as the underwriter or somebody else can be the underwriter, who is the syndicate bankers that is appointed by the merchant banker or the particular uh, merchant banker who works on behalf of that particular company. They also appoint the registers who keeps the records everything about this uh, process, the IPO process. And finally, the appointment of the brokers also is done by the merchant banker. So, these are the things done by before this issuance and whenever the company is going to the public for issuing the equity. 
this is what basically the steps what the merchant banker always follow or has to follow whenever they want to raise the equity from the market. Then after this is once they have also certain obligations. What are those obligations? They have to appoint a compliance officer, they have to appoint this other intermediaries, preparation of offer document or prospectus and filling them with the register, stock exchange and SEBI, due diligence report they have to prepare, allocation or the responsibilities of the different stakeholders that has to be done by them, pricing coordinating with the stock exchanges for book building process including software, bidding terminals everything, collection of application from the bankers and statement of amount received, if is there any investor grievances in that process, if there any complaint or anything that ha also has to be addressed by them. And once this bidding and everything will take place, their job is basically monitoring the post issue which is screening the applications, deciding the allotment procedure, mailing of the allotment letter providing the share certificates and refund orders. If somebody will not be allotted the IPO, then the money also has to be refunded then. And that refunding process also will be taken over by or will be uh, taken care by the merchant bankers. So, the merchant banker is the has the primary role for both post and pre issuance of the equity in the market. Mostly, they are basically called as the book runner lead manager. In this process, they are called the book runner lead manager. In short, we call them BRLM. And whenever any company goes for IPO, their first job is they appoint somebody who will act as the BRLM. Then this BRLM will provide all kind of necessary services for the pricing of IPO and all those things which are related to for the pricing of the IPO or the issuance of the IPO. That is what basically the obligations the uh, uh, merchant bankers have. Just now we are talking about the code of conduct, SEBI has uh, mandate, uh, made it mandatory. What are those codes of conduct what SEBI has made for the merchant banker? The merchant banker should make all efforts to protect the interest of the investors they should not always act only on the behalf of the companies, should maintain high standards of integrity, dignity and fairness of conduct of the business, should fulfill all obligations in a professional and ethical way, should not discriminate among the clients, should endeavor to ensure that the inquiries, grievances are adequately dealt with in a timely and appropriate manner whenever any kind of issuance is carried out should ensure that the prospectus or letter of offer is available to investor at the time of issue. So, the information about the company and everything that is not the job of the company, it is the job of the BRLM or the merchant banker. They have to provide all kind of information and the basic job of because once the BRLM is appointed that information goes to SEBI, SEBI the approval of the SEBI is required for that issuance who is the BRLM. Let company A has appointed somebody as the BRLM or the any investment bank which can act as a BRLM, then that information has to send to the SEBI and SEBI approves that. And now SEBI has the idea that who uh, what the information who is the merchant banker for them and whether this merchant banker is following all kinds of requirements or not that is basically under the SEBI's regulation. That is why this kind of code of conduct has to be followed by the merchant bankers. Then what are those uh, leading merchant bankers in India if you see we have a uh, SBI capital market, Punjab National Bank also has a merchant banking division, IFCI financial services in terms of the public sector. In terms of the private sector, we have ICICI securities, Access Bank, Bajaj Capital, Tata Capital Market, ES Bank, Kotak Mahindra, Reliance Securities, all can be act as a merchant bankers. But if you see the key foreign players, uh, always people have more faith on them because uh, the size is quite large and they are the big names which exist in the market, they are Goldman Sachs, India Securities Private Limited, Morgan Stanley, India Company Private Limited, Barclay Securities India Private Limited, Bank of America, Citigroup Global Markets, 
India Private Limited and DSP Merrill Lands. So, these are the major players. So, you might have observed that whenever any company in India is going for IPO, either of these any of the merchant bankers will always act as the book run or lead manager for them whose responsibility is to look after all the pre and post issue obligations for the pricing of these issuance. So, this is the way the merchant banker plays a very significant role in the uh, Indian financial system uh, for in terms of the financing, in terms of consulting, in terms of other services, in risk management values and etcetera, etcetera. So, that is why the significance of the mer merchant banker is quite large in this context. So, there are some other uh, organizations or other entities which also provide the services which are the considered as the non-banking financial companies. So, we will be discussing uh, like your credit rating agencies and all that we will be discussing in the next class. Please go through this particular uh, references uh, for this particular session. Thank you.